we first came because there was a meditation center in Sutton and then we fell in love with the local community and the landscape. We were coming from India. We each had a backpack and a bicycle. That's all we owned. <laughs> In the space of a year, we then got a car. And a we got job a car, a, a job, got married, got pregnant, bought a house. It was a little, uh, a little crazy. We did not expect to do agriculture. We just thought we'd have a small garden. It got evolved no, the, organically. Yeah, the, the garden got bigger and bigger and bigger, and then Michelle got some grants, which allowed us to buy new tools and dig a pond. And we realized, well, if we have all these tools, that we can grow much more food. And, uh, and there's a demand for food because everybody eats. <laughs> Biointensive. It's growing the most amount of food on the smallest parcel of land possible. So here's an example. We were visiting a farm, an organic farm, and in their bed they had one row of carrots because that bed is basically designed according to the tractor. Whereas here, in a same size bed, has five rows of carrots. Well, you need hands to do that, right? The farmster, hipster farmer. I think we'd be considered in that category for sure. You're in the farm and you have your iPhone and you have different apps, you know, to calculate the light or to calculate this or that, and you're using technology to grow better. And most of the farmers who would see this kind of production would not consider us as farmers. If you don't have a big tractor and you're doing 100 acres of corn or soy or wheat, you're not really a farmer. It's starting to change, but that's, that's the general feeling. We work a lot with exchanges. We exchange for massage, osteopathy, tea, chocolate, yoga, childcare, yoga, carpentry. Yeah, everything. Creating community where we live, where we work, because post petroleum, these are the people that are going to be closest to us, and we're going to have to rely on each other. So I think it's very good to create those um, those connections now. I mean, permaculture is so much about interacting with the land, but it's also about interacting with people. And we did a five-day workshop on edible forest garden design. And so this was actually all designed by the group. It wasn't just us. This is the work of about 25 minds together. The work that we accomplished probably would have taken us years to do oh, yeah. by ourselves. Definitely. If you're letting the water leave your land, then you're losing some fertility. So we redesigned, but trying to keep water as much as possible on the land, and then it's there available for the roots when the plants need them. And water is life. Since we've dug these ponds, within days there was hundreds and hundreds of frogs that just appeared out of nowhere. You know, we really encourage people when they're working in the garden to not have their headphones on, uh, to not be listening to music. You can observe uh, the critters in the ground. You can observe the evolution of the plants. You can observe, uh, you know, how is the sun, the rain, the wind affecting the plants and affecting what's going on inside. So it's very much a, a meditation at the same time. And uh, this is something that, you know, we've been doing. We've devoted the last 20 years of our, our lives to. Lots of lessons, lots more work to do. 